Okay, now we're going to talk about representing data. That's what we have been leading up to this whole time. We're still in the data handling section. So we collected the data with tallies and tables. We organized the data with a stem leaf diagram, which made it easier to summarize the data. And here we learn about need, uh, mean, medium, mode, and range. And how are we going to represent the data, make it much more user-friendly? We're going to start with a bar and double graph here. And we're going to learn exactly how to do that. By the end of this video, we would have filled a formula in to this box, or a picture rather. So a bar and double bar graph. Just a reminder, this is a great way to represent data. So how do we interpret bar graphs? We have car colors and the frequency. So we sat, for example, at home and we watched different cars come past us. You might have seen the video of us watching this. Let's, for example, say this is our frequency of yellow cars. We saw a couple blue, green, and red. So we're going to fill this in here. We might be asked questions like, what car color is the most common? And are there more green or red cars? So just looking at this, what car color is the most common? You'll quite easily see that that is the blue cars. And are there more green or red cars? So remember, this is the amount of cars we saw, which is the most. And it's quite easy to see that the red is the most common or more than green. So what would the frequency be of these cars? How many of each car have we seen? Now, depending on the size of the data bins of how big the range is here, it might be difficult to read. So if we look at the blue, we draw a line down, we go across to 20, we will need to divide this up into five even blocks. So four lines along this graph. And I think that goes at about 22. During a test or exam, you will need to get out your ruler and measure it carefully. If you are doing geography, you'll know all about this. Oh, sorry, I've drawn this for red when it should have been blue, 22. Let's have a look at the red. The red is slap bang on 15. That's quite easy. The green, again, you're going to have to draw a line down with a ruler and draw it and divide it between the 10 and the 15 or whatever the range is. And here we're going to get 12 is my guess. And yellow, a bit more difficult to see, still looks like it's just less than a half or seven and a half. So I'm going to say it's seven. Right, let's move on. We have a bar. Oh, I first want to talk about what is the difference between a bar graph or a column graph. Now, I'm going to get into the difference of what a histogram is in our histogram video. But essentially, you need to know that this, what you're looking at now, is actually a column graph. Because these are going along columns. A bar graph is on its side. But we are going to call bar graphs any graph of columns where there is gaps between. This is a bar graph. We are going to call that a bar graph. So let's look at this example. What season do people like the most? Which table does this graph above represent? So what are these tables, A, B, C, or D, does this graph here represent? Right, so we can see summer is at about, we're just guessing now, 55. Autumn's at about 12. Winter's at about 22. And springs at about 15, or maybe a bit less. Let's look at A. Now, summer is definitely the biggest number here. And we can see that summer is the most popular, but it's only 33. And here, the winter is bigger. Yes, autumn is, looks about right. Spring looks about right, but we definitely know that it can't be A because of that 33. Let's look at graph B. 55, that looks about right. Uh, autumn 11, mm, it, it could be 11. Winter 30, oh, winter definitely doesn't look like it's 30. If winter was 30, it would be touching this line over here, which is not. So this graph, it can't be graph B. Okay, we have 55 again. We have 11, which we think could be right. Winter 15, hmm, that can't be right. If winter were 15, it would be here not going above that line to 20. So this we immediately know can't be right, and spring 
is 22 and we can see that spring is below 20. It's not this graph. Let's just check this graph D. Spring is 55, uh, summer is 55, that looks about right. Autumn is 11, that could be right. Winter 22, that looks about perfect. And then spring 14 and we get 15. So that looks about perfect. So our answer would be D. So this graph we just did is a two variable graph. There are two variables. It was the amount of people that we asked and what season they liked the best. But now we're going to look at double graphs. And the beauty about a double graph is you can ask a third variable. Now don't get confused between the variables here. If that says three variables but there's only two graphs, it still means that there's three variables because we have the summer, we have boys and girls, and we have the number of people. So here we can split this up even further. We can look at summer and look at which gender likes summer the most, autumn, winter, and spring. So a double bar graph can be very interesting. It's double because there's two bars together. Another way to show a double bar graph is with a percentage. So this would be the total number of boys and girls, which was 55 as we knew. And this would be how many of the boys like some of the most and how many of the girls like some of the most. Sorry, girls and then boys. This is not nearly as, be as easy way to show double graphs and I would strongly recommend keeping it the other way. But you could also even get four variables. This would be a triple bar graph. You don't need to worry about this at the moment. Sorry, I've drawn all over it here. But here you can see that we've added dogs. So what season does each gender like best and dogs? This now has added a fourth variable because we can now compare summer or the seasons to both boys and girls, not just people. Um, oh, and dogs. So that's the fourth one. Now, what we could ask questions here, you could keep adding this. You could do five variables and go on, but you want to keep it as a good representation of the data. So who likes some of the most, the boys or the girls? Okay, we know the girls are the orange. Oh, the girls clearly like summer more than the boys. So we're going to say that that is the girls. Then we can ask the question, who likes winter more or most, boys or girls? Winter, blue, the boys are much higher than the girls. We can say the boys. Then we can ask questions, what season are the boys and girls' opinions the most similar? Hmm. Here, autumn, they look pretty close. And here, spring, they look pretty close. If we were getting numbers, we could work it out. But I'm going to say spring for this example. Great, so that's our bar and double graphs here. Those are the boys and girls graph, and this is the exact bar graph, and this happens to be a double bar graph. And remember, this is how we represent data.